don't have sex, because you will get pregnant and die. They're the people you'd actually want to be called a teacher's pet for. Don't have sex in the missionary position, don't have sex standing up. Just don't do it, promise? Okay, everybody take some rubbers. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 good movie teachers. I'm Professor Charles Xavier. <laughs> for this list, we're defining teachers as those who are employed by some sort of educational institution. So big screen faculty members and principals may be included as well, just as long as they're memorable, inspiring, unique, or have made a difference to their students. Yeah, adultery, vengeance, crimes of passion. Kill the beat. I'm not gonna rap for you guys, okay? It's pandering and it's been done before in every bad movie you've ever seen. Number 10, Glenn Holland, Mr. Holland's Opus. Hi. I'm Glenn Holland, I'm the new music teacher. The career of a teacher comes with its ups and downs, and this film exemplifies that. Okay, okay, that wasn't bad, that wasn't bad at all. Mr. Holland's opus follows the career of the fictional Mr. Holland as he teaches music at a high school. Okay, Miss Lang, um, would you take it from bar 37, please? The drama really explores the difficulties of teaching and going after your own creative pursuits, and how Mr. Holland struggles with what it truly means to be an example for his students. My name is Mr. Holland. This, of course, is a title of courtesy that I will extend back to you, uh, Mr. or Miss, as the, as the circumstances allow. A hit with the critics, the 1995 Stephen Herrick-directed flick earned Richard Dreyfuss both an Oscar and Golden Globe nod for his performance. We are your symphony, Mr. Holland. We are the melodies and the notes of your opus. And we are the music of your life. Number nine, Ms. Sharon Norbury, Mean Girls. I gotta say, watching the police search my house really was the cherry on top of a fantastic year. Having Tina Fey as your teacher sounds like one of the best things that could happen to you as a student. Shopping? No, no, I'm just here with my boyfriend. And unsurprisingly, she really shines as the 12th grade calculus teacher in this flick. Joking. Sometimes older people make jokes. My Nana takes her wig off when she's drunk. Your Nana and I have that in common. As the coach of the mathletes, she struggles to get the kids to be passionate about school and not compromise who they are for other people. Katie, I hope you do join mathletes, you know, because uh, we start in a couple weeks and I would love to have a girl on the team, just, you know, so the team could meet a girl. It's even more interesting to see her give advice, considering her life is a bit of a mess, as a divorcee and part-time barmaid at TJ Calamities. But that just shows she isn't perfect, just like everybody else. I know, how would I know, right? I'm divorced, I'm broke from getting divorced. The only guy that ever calls my house is Randy from Chase Visa. She's also the voice of reason at North Shore High and is definitely underappreciated. Oh, hi, did you wanna buy some drugs? Number eight, Minerva McGonagall, the Harry Potter franchise. Welcome to Hogwarts. As the Transfiguration Professor and Deputy Headmistress at Hogwarts, McGonagall can have the reputation for being something of a hard ass. Harry Potter, follow me. But really, her main goal is to protect the students from unsavory forces. Do what you have to do. I'll secure the castle. She's one to always have a sassy comeback or comment, and her considerable wit is just one aspect of her charm. Can you imagine the look in our McGonagall's face if we were late? That was bloody brilliant. Oh, thank you for that assessment, Mr. Weasley. She's at her absolute best when she squares off against the dreadful Professor Umbridge, which shows students that she's not a witch to be messed with. <laughs> Exactly, are you insinuating? I am merely requesting that when it comes to my students, you conform to the prescribed disciplinary practices. Number seven, Luann Johnson, Dangerous Minds. I'd like you to meet uh, Carla Nichols, our assistant principal. Hello. Carla, Luann Johnson, I'll wait outside. Based on the autobiography, My Posse Don't Do Homework by Luann Johnson, Dangerous Minds sees Michelle Pfeiffer bring the real-life U.S. Marine turned teacher to life. You're a Marine, a for real Marine. Discharge, but yes. 
Telling the story of a no-nonsense first-time teacher encountering black and Latino students from rival neighborhoods and gangs, the drama showcases her unorthodox techniques, like teaching the students karate to get them to respect her. Okay, anybody else know any karate? What about you? Darrell changed okay. some motherfucking karate. Once she earns their trust, she's able to push her students to new academic heights. Thought maybe you got lost on your way to class. Wanted to help you find your way back. Despite mediocre reviews, the movie was a smash box office hit. Number six, Aaron Gruel, Freedom Writers. My name is Aaron Gruel. Welcome to Freshman English. Hollywood couldn't make up a teacher as inspirational as Aaron Gruel, but it's great to see her adapted on screen. Raise your hand if you know what the Holocaust is. Freedom Writers is based on the book that the real-life teacher wrote, and in it, she recounts how she used the events of the Holocaust to get her at-risk students to write. We're gonna write every day in these journals. You can write about whatever you want. The past, the present, the future. You can write it like a diary, or you can write songs, poems, any good thing, bad thing, anything. But you have to write every day. Thanks to her teaching skills, the students are able to express their own disappointment, hopes, and dreams for the first time. Miss G, we can fight this, you know, like the Freedom Riders. The film does a particularly great job in showing how dedication and time can pay off and affect a student's life. We're going to be together junior and senior year. <laughs> Number five. Jaime Escalante, Stand and Deliver. Excuse me, my name is Jaime Escalante and I was supposed to teach computer science. We don't have computers. Also based on a true life teacher, this film follows Jaime Escalante's classroom as he prepares a group of underachieving students to take AP Calculus by their senior year. I want to teach Calculus next year. His classroom is no joke and he spends much of the film getting the students to believe in themselves and in his rigorous approach, which forces them to take multiple years of summer school. They haven't had trig or math analysis. They can take them both during the summer. You expect our best students to go to summer school? From 7 to 12. Every day, including Saturdays. Yep, that'll do it. Stand and Deliver went on to earn actor Edward James Almos an Oscar nod and has been preserved in the National Film Registry. We, the AP Calculus class, would like to present this plaque to our teacher, Jaime A. Escalante. Number four, Dewey Finn, School of Rock. My name is Dewey Finn, and no, I'm not a licensed teacher, but I have been touched by your kids, and I'm pretty sure I've touched them. There's no reason why school can't be fun, and Dewey Finn proves this. After he's kicked out of his band, Dewey pretends to be a substitute teacher at an uptight private school. He ends up being an unexpectedly great teacher, showing his students how to let go and using rock and roll as a way to get his students to become better individuals. The school of rock. And we shall teach rock and roll to the world. He's literally every kid's dream teacher, since he teaches them to stick it to the man and follow their dreams. Leonard. Sticking it to the man? Yes! He gives them awesome life advice about things like living hardcore. You're not hardcore! Unless you live hardcore! And then that's where I want the backup singers to be like, well, you're not hardcore. No, you're not hardcore! Unless you live hardcore! Unless you live hardcore! But the legend of the rent was way hardcore! Boom! Number three, Miss Jennifer Honey, Matilda. Matilda's teacher, Miss Honey, was one of those remarkable people who appreciates every single child for who she or he is. Kind and soft spoken. Miss Honey is that teacher that every kid wants to impress while growing up. I I'm Jennifer Honey. I'm Matilda's teacher. In a school with a sadistic dictator-like principal, Miss Honey is Agatha Trunchbull's exact opposite. What are those? You mean my pigtails? Are you a pig, Amanda? No, Miss Trunchbull. She encourages students to find their voices, support one another, and use their brains in unorthodox ways. 
Pretty soon you'll be able to do any multiplication, whether it's 2 times 7. 14. Very good. Or 13 times 379. 4,927. And you can't forget how she encourages Matilda to keep on reading, despite the disapproval of her parents. If you think watching some rotten TV show is more important than your daughter, then maybe you shouldn't be a parent. Things work out even better when Miss Honey is able to become the school's principal and change it for the better. I am not seven years old anymore, Aunt Trunchbull. <sighs> Number two, Mark Thackeray to Sir with Love. I don't know how much you know, so we'll start from scratch. Inspired by the semi-autobiographical book by E.R. Brathwaite, this film is one of the shining moments for Sidney Poitier. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Thackeray. The bloody thing's just slipped. The name is Thackeray. And they're not bloody things. They were a pile of books. After he loses his job as an engineer, he applies for a job as a high school teacher in a rough East End London school. My name is Thackeray. I'm a new teacher. Instead of giving up on his less than enthusiastic students, he engages them as adults and gives them the opportunity to be in charge of their own schooling. Next, we are all going to observe certain courtesies in this classroom. You will call me Sir or Mr. Thackeray. The young ladies will be addressed as Miss, the boys by their surname. He's tough and real with his students in a way that's fresh and captivating, and that's what makes him so unforgettable. Soon your principal interest will be girls. You will be much more attractive to them with clean clothes, clean shoes, hands, face, teeth, etc. Now, any, any questions? Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Well, what are we supposed to do without you? When? If I read one more paper from one of your classmates who talks about how hot she is in the bathtub, her fake British accent, or is she still married to Ashton Kutcher, I'm going to kill myself. Hi. Oh, I'm Roberta Gaspari Demetrius. Dennis oh. Rausch, our music teacher and program coordinator. Pissy, I've never had children. But you're wrong. I have. Thousands of them. Number one, John Keating, Dead Poet Society. <laughs> Mr. Keating should be the standard for all English teachers, both fictional and real. Oh, Captain, my Captain. As a teacher at a fictional all-boys prep school, Dead Poets Society sees Mr. Keating using poetry to get his students to not only do better academically, but also to think of their lives in a new way. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race, and the human race is filled with passion. He's passionate and knows exactly how to bring words to life. Case in point, one particularly iconic scene in which he gets the students to stand on their desks and recite, Oh Captain, My Captain. Oh Captain, My Captain. Mr. Overstreet, I warn you, sit down. Sit down. With a script based on the screenwriter's real-life school experiences, this drama truly felt authentic and Robin Williams played John Keating with subtlety and grace. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Do you agree with our list? Which movie teacher do you wish you had? For more educational top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. All right, chlamydia. K. L. A.